All right, guys, I have a comment here that needs just a little bit more explanation than I can put into a short, so I'm making this relatively short little video. This is Scott coming to you from Nicaragua, and Mr. Frodo1111 says, Hey, Scott, well, Dan answers my question by here. That has to do with multivitamins. Then he says, Today I spent half the morning trying to find bus schedules, et cetera, et cetera, from UCA, that's the University of Central America bus terminal. We refer to the buses that go from there as the UCA buses. Their technical name is the Interlocales, but no one calls them that. They're the, inter they're the UCA buses just because that's the terminal that they're from, even though UCA isn't there anymore. That's what the terminal's called. There might be a new name coming. I don't know what it is, um, but everyone calls it that. He says, if I got it right, it seems like they go every hour or so from 4 a.m. So first thing, if you're looking for bus schedules, you are in the wrong country. That is not how things work here. If you're taking like the Tika bus or Nika Expresso, then they have a rough schedule of when they depart from one city and go on to the next. Those are the big buses and you pay big dollars for them. And by big dollars, I mean somewhere between 20 and $80 typically, not not hundreds, but not two or three. When you're talking about chicken buses or Uka buses or Interlocales or similar, the idea that you have a schedule just goes out the window. That is not how that works in any way whatsoever for a number of reasons. But the the interlocales work a little bit differently. So this is how they work. They roughly hold 15 people. It depends on the bus, but generally it's 15 people. They have a terminal where they start from. Uh, there's the UCA in Managua, but here in Leon, we have the Leon one, for example, and they all work about the same. So the bus that's going to where you want to go, the shuttle that's going where you want to go, has a specific spot where it goes, and one of those will pull in when it's empty. It will unload like around the corner. Everyone will get out, and then it'll pull into its spot. This isn't 100% consistent in how they do it. They sometimes shake it up, and it can be a little bit confusing, and sometimes their spot moves, and sometimes they have two because they're like really busy. But in general, this is what's going on. And it pulls into a loading spot and they open the door. And then they start screaming the name of the city that you want to go to. Leon, 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 Leon. And you go, Leon? And they go, Leon. And then you get onto the bus. And there's 15 seats. And so you work your way in and you fill in the seats, take whatever one you want when you first get in there. And then when it's full, it goes. So if 15 people are waiting, it pulls in, everybody gets on, and it's gone. It can be gone in minutes. And then the next one pulls up. And then if there's 15 people waiting, they get on and it goes. On Sundays, for example, they'll actually get backed up. And you'll have people uh, in Managua backed up in a long line to get onto the Leon bus. Other ones will have different amounts of busy. The Leon one is very busy because it's a really easy run. And it's the two biggest cities, so they're very busy in general. So you'll have all these people waiting in line. And they'll just pull up. And fifth, the next 15 people will just get on and off it goes. If you're a party of more than people, like, like let's say you had eight people in your party for some reason. And you would be divided. You could be like, hey, we want the first eight of the next one. They'll be like, sure. And they'll just take people from behind you until you can go into the next one you go. Nice and easy. As it, It's really straightforward. They don't wait. They don't have a schedule. They do have a time in the morning when they start. And I don't know exactly when that is. 4 a.m. is possible, but seems too early, but maybe. Um, and then they run until somewhere around 6 at night. But maybe as late as 8, you never know. Um, and there's probably a set schedule, but it's certainly not posted anywhere Nobody knows for sure. The the taxi drivers don't know. The people who ride don't know. Nobody knows, right? So so it's complicated. Just get there and hope for the best in many cases. Uh, but during the day, they're going basically as fast as they can. Now, during much of the day, there's not that many people getting on. So it can be 15 to even 60 minutes before it fills up. But I've never had to wait more than maybe 10 minutes. Um, but there's always somebody there, right? I'm never the first one. Um, I don't ride so often that I run into those situations. I have quite recently got onto a bus that had 14 people and they did not have a 15th. And we're all sitting there waiting. And one of the people leaned over to me and goes, you know, for a couple dollars, you could buy the extra seat. And then someone else looked at me and they're kind of like, uh-huh. I'm like, okay. So I look back at the, at the guy and he's kind of like, waiting for me. And I'm like, I'll take the extra seat. And he's like, done, we're out of here. And so if you buy that empty seat, of course, it's yours, you can put your bag there, you can just spread out in it if you want, everyone can share it, whatever you want, it's yours, and they'll leave. So you if you really want to go, and there's no one else there, you can buy all 15 seats. And that sounds crazy, but they're less than $3 per seat. 
And it's very rare that you would be the only one on the bus. If there was, say, eight people on the bus, you'd have to buy seven seats. I don't know anyone who's ever done that, but buying one or two seats to make it more comfortable and let you get out of there right away, it makes everyone on the bus happy because they have more space and it lets them go without waiting as long. So that's a really common thing when it's slow. When it's busy, don't do that unless you really need the extra space. And even then, think twice about doing it because if you're buying empty seats, you're forcing someone to wait in line. Yes, the bus company is selling more spots, but you're making them drive empty seats around when someone's waiting. So that's not great. Just do it when you really need it for like your luggage or something, or you need the bus to be able to go and they would otherwise be waiting. I don't think they would wait indefinitely, but they will wait quite some time for that last person. So there are cases where it can wait a little bit, but in general, it is extremely fast and uh, it's almost as fast as they can load. So most of the day, they're going every 15 to 20 minutes. Um, there are times that they leave so fast that the bus behind will actually pass one. If they're driving a little bit faster, they will pass the one in front of them. That's not unheard of. So it gets a little bit crazy because of that. So they they can be at times just pulling up. Everybody runs on and just goes like five minutes and they're out of there. Uh, so um, but a schedule? No, there's no such thing. And the chicken buses are roughly the same. Uh, they may have some very slight schedule that they're kind of working from, but what it ends up being is just completely random because they stop so many places and have so many people jumping on and off. And if someone like really needs to use a bathroom, they will at times, if you have an emergency, wait for you. They'll be like, we're coming past the bathroom. We're going to do a turnaround. So jump out, use the bathroom. We'll turn around, come back, jump back on and we'll go. Right. Uh, so I've had that happen, not for me, but I've had it happen while I'm on the bus. And, uh, you know, that can cause a minute or two delay. So the schedules are pretty loose, even if they did have one. But really, they don't have schedules. It's not how it works. Uh, hopefully that explains a little bit of what, what you need to know about buses. So they're actually quite efficient, more efficient than you're imagining. But the idea that there is going to be a schedule is completely not how Nicaragua works. Until we get a train system, there is essentially nothing with a set schedule here in the country. It just doesn't work that way. Even the ferries uh, for Ometepe, to the best of my knowledge, do not have a schedule like that. They just go as they can because they can take 45 minutes or two hours to get across the lake. So doing a really tight schedule, extremely difficult. They just do the best that they can and they just fill up and go. So that's important for a lot of reasons. It allows them to be as efficient as possible. It minimizes the amount of time that you wait. It maximizes the number of people that can move across the lake. It's just very different than the American system, which is much more, it's going to leave at exactly this time, arrive at exactly this time, and we're leaving whether we're full or not. Nicaragua, everything's always full and always moving. So they move more people more rapidly, but you can't do this real tight scheduling thing. But everything happens so often that it's really rarely a problem at all. Basically, you're always just arriving, jumping on, and leaving. So no matter when you arrive, you pretty much get to go right away.